Welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge programming tutorial series. Our goal in this series is to provide simple and straightforward guidance in programming an FTC robot. In today's video, we are going to be talking about trajectories. Now, trajectories in Roadrunner is how the robot moves from point A to point B or more. So today we're just going to get used to the Roadrunner concept and the main portions of this and what Roadrunner uses to move the robot place to place. So let's start out by getting our hardware class. And I'm still in the quick start because I'm assuming that most of you are still in the quick start as well. So I'm still going to use the sample mechanum drive. So I would do sample mechanum drive. I'm going to call it drive train. And that's going to equal the new sample mechanum drive with the hardware map in the constructor. And the only other thing we have to do now is wait for start. So let's talk about the Roadrunner coordinate system first. If we think about the field on a 2D scale, like we're looking right on top of the field, and we think about a coordinate plane, saying that 0, 0 is the center of the field. The way Roadrunner does it is that the x coordinate is the y coordinate and the y coordinate is the x coordinate if we think about a coordinate system. So if you're moving in the x direction, you're actually moving up towards the top of the field and the bottom of the field. If we think about Skystone, because this kind of sounds confusing to me the way I'm saying it, if you're moving positive in the x direction, you're moving towards the uh, into the building zone. If you're moving in the x direction negative, you're moving into the loading zone. And then the y positive would be the red side of the field, and the y negative would be the blue side of the field. So 0, 0 is the center, and that's the coordinate system for Roadrunner. So now trajectories, or let's not start with trajectories yet. We use pose and vector. But they use poses and vectors. The main thing we're going to use is pose 2D. And we'll see later, once I start getting into the trajectories, how that works. So let's start with defining a trajectory. Let's say we wanted to go forward. I'm going to introduce as many as I possibly can right now because there are a lot of trajectories. So we ju it's just defined as trajectory. And um, Roadrunner is a Kotlin project, so you're going to see that little K sort of thing. And let's say we wanted this trajectory to be called go forward. You got to set it equal to, and this is the drivetrain dot trajectory builder. This is the trajectory builder that w the multiple ones that we defined or were defined for us rather in the mechanum drive class. So now the way we need to build this is our we need our starting pose. So the way we're going to do this is do a new pose 2D. That's what it's called. And pose 2D it has the x coordinate, the y coordinate, and the heading the heading being in radians. So let's say we're in the center of the field facing the forward direction. We're gonna say zero, comma, zero, comma, zero. And you'll see it puts there the X, Y, and the heading. Okay, now I could just continue going on in the lines, but I like to space it out. Don't put a semicolon. It's This isn't over yet. We're still building our trajectory. We gotta go dot. And let's say this is just going forward a certain amount. So we can use forward, and then the distance in inches I want to go forward. Let's say I want it to go forward 100 inches. We're still not done. I like to use the spaces to kind of space them out. It looks cleaner. And then once you're done with your trajectory, you build it. So if you put all of your movements in this single trajectory, the robot will never stop. Like if I wanted to go forward 100 and then backward 20 and I put them in the same trajectory, it's going to go forward and then immediately go back 20. So we kind of don't want that. Unless you wanted that, then you could do that. But in this case, I'm just trying to go forward here. So now we've defined our trajectory here. Now how we use the trajectory is follow trajectory. And then the name of the trajectory, ours is go forward. Now you can see the process of defining a trajectory is pretty simple. So let's get into the use of these. Here we got forward. If we wanted to go backward, I can use back. Okay, but I'm going to use forward. So just so you know, back exists. 
Now let's define a new trajectory. We can do a line to a specific position on the field. So I want to do a separate trajectory for that. And we're going to, let's just call it line to position. And then we got to use our trajectory builder. And that's going to take in our new pose 2D. And I'm, I'll talk about ways how we can make all of this kind of simpler in the end. At the end, towards the end of this video. And let's say we didn't want to start in the center of the field. Let's say we wanted to start in the x direction 10, we wanted to start 0 at the y, and we're still at 0 on the heading. Okay. Now the way we do this, we would do dot line 2. And line 2 takes in a vector 2D, so we're going to want to go new vector 2D. And the only difference between pose and vector is that vector doesn't care about heading. It just cares about what position we want to go to. Well, it does, it, well, it tries to hold, or actually it doesn't try, it does hold the current heading that you're at. So like I defined that I'm gonna be at heading zero, it's gonna stay at heading zero. So this is just gonna take in the X and the Y. And let's say we wanna go back to the center of the field. We would just do that like that and then build the semicolon. And then we would use that trajectory by following our line to position trajectory. Okay, now, there's also trajectories for strafing, and I'm gonna do a new trajectory for that. Let's start with strafe left. That's going to equal the trajectory builder and new pose 2D for our starting pose. And let's start in the center of the field. A classic because I'm really not using this for anything so I'm just gonna keep kind of starting in the center of the field um, and let's say we wanted to strafe 50 inches so we would use strafe left 50 and build that we can also use strafe right if we wanted to strafe right and then the way we would follow that trajectory as you see, this gets kind of tedious, but it is very helpful to do it this way. Now, another one that can be very useful in certain situations, similar to the line to trajectory, you can strafe or line to a specific point. We can um, strafe to a specific point. So let's call that one strafe to position and that is going to equal and I would suggest we're going to start in the center of the field again but I would suggest for your program if you plan on using Roadrunner to create kind of a trajectory class and have all your trajectories in there make them accessible make them like variable based so that you can put in whatever you want Make them like all kinds of voids. You can have return things as well. But that's just my suggestion. You don't have to take that whatsoever. That's what my team does. It works pretty well. So here, this is strafe 2. And then it's going to take in the vector 2D again, just like the line 2 does. And let's say we wanted to strafe to the 50 in the Y direction. And that would be like that. And then we'd build that. And then as we follow it, that would be strafe to position. Okay, now the last one I want to go over is kind of the more most complicated one, but it's, in my opinion, the coolest movement Roadrunner has, and that is a spline. If we know what a standard spline looks like, it's kind of like, if you think about X cubed, honestly, kind of like that, or not even like that, kind of like, yeah, you know. I don't know where I'm going with this, but kind of like X cubed, if you think about that on a coordinate plane, it looks cool like that. So let's define, I'm just going to call it, and I'm going to call it spline to position, because that's the only way we can have splines in Roadrunner. We don't have a distance on a spline anyway, because then that would be a line. So we go trajectory builder and pose 2D, and let's let's start in the center of the field but let's go 
at 90 degrees. And we have to go math that to radians 90. Make sure it's two radians, because if you just put 90, 90 in radians is not the same as 90 in degrees. And we would use spline 2 in this situation. And we would use the pose 2D to find our pose. And let's say we wanted to go to 50, 50. And let's say we wanted to keep our 90 degree heading. It's going to end up in that 90 degree heading, but it's not going to keep that 90 degree heading or else it wouldn't be a spline. And then, of course, we're going to build that and then follow the trajectory spline to position, just like that. And that's pretty much the Roadrunner concept of trajectories and following them and how you can use them in your programs. And like I said, I'd suggest creating a trajectory class that can be very useful for storing your trajectories instead of making a new one every time. Because as you see, this gets really long and kind of boring if you do more than one trajectory there. And you can also create variables for the different poses and vectors and stuff to use. That'll make your code much simpler and easier for you and others to understand as well. And yeah, that's it for this video. We talked about trajectories, and I hope now that this tutorial series gets you up and going with Roadrunner. So from all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.